Hello, testing. I'm waiting for the air conditioning to stop. I turned the air conditioning on because I just filmed a video on mask knee. I think, yeah, I published that on Monday and I just started getting really hot really fast. Oh, hi everybody, it's Brandon. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me today for another skincare vlog. If you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon. I am a medical writer. I've written over a thousand medical articles, all of which you can find freely on the web, most of which have been focused in skincare and skincare research. And I will leave a link down below so you can check those out. But today I'm going to be talking about something that I have a, uh, I don't know, ambiguous relationship with, and it is the Ordinary Caffeine Plus EGCG Solution. And this is something that I got at Christmas. I actually have two bottles because I thought I lost one bottle. So I went to Ulta to pick up another one. And it turns out as soon as I bought the other one, I found this one. So now I have two. So I'm trying to use these up in the best way I can. I'm not using them on my face though. And I will tell you in the video why that is. But before I begin just talking about the research behind this product and why I don't recommend using it, at least on your skin, please hit the like button down below. It really helps me to reach more people and grow my channel and I really really appreciate it and also hit that subscribe button down below as well I'd love to have you here for future videos I discuss skincare products and skincare research if that sounds interesting to you please definitely subscribe stick around please join this skincare community skincare research community I'd love to have it grow I'd love to have you included okay so these products these caffeine plus EGCG products, epigata halogen gallate, um, which is an extract extract from tea, Camellia sinensis, green tea. It's high, higher in green tea than it is the other teas, like white teas, but it definitely is present in all teas. Caffeine has some benefits for the skin. It acts as a vasoconstrictor, which means it just constricts blood blood vessels and uh, it helps to provide a temporary lifting effect. And so this is often used for the under eye. I think on the bottle it actually says reduces appearance of eye contour, pigmentation, and puffiness. So I bought this for my under eyes just because I deal with something called allergic shiners. I think it's in, in regard to my allergies. I'm also rather thin, so I feel like maybe, and pale, so I feel like it just shows up more, but I have a somewhat like white tail appearance under my eyes, which I think is caused by allergies. I haven't gotten that fully diagnosed yet, but I'm working on it. So I bought this, or I asked for it for Christmas, and I bought it subsequently at Ulta to reduce the appearance of the, the under eye. It's not puffiness, but it's like a paler, it's a paler pigmentation than my, my other skin tone which is very weird usually normally it's darker but mine is whiter i don't really understand that but anyway yeah caffeine and to a certain extent egcg the extract from green tea is used to help reduce that the the pigmentation issues underneath the eyes and help to reduce puffiness caffeine also has some research benefits as a an antioxidant protector against oxidation or oxidative stress caused by uv so you have some potential there for protecting the skin egcg is also a powerful antioxidant that also helps to protect against uvb oxidative stress and maybe even uva oxidative stress so you have that going for it and in a minute i will tell you my thoughts of why i and i will also give you a rundown of my experience using this product for my under eyes. So I will provide a more detailed experience review of how I use this for my under eyes and what I experienced after using it. I'll provide that in the video a little bit further in the video, but I've included chapters so you can just sort of skip around if you want. Now, the issue with the topical caffeine is that there are some conflicting data out there to suggest that it may not be terrific for your skin from an anti-aging perspective. There are some studies out there and I'll put the, I'll provide the study citations in the description box down below, but these studies have suggested that topical caffeine can interfere and inhibit collagen synthesis. So that's not terrific, especially if you're coming at skincare from an anti-aging angle and you're wanting to improve collagen synthesis. And there's tons of products to do that. I mean, there's vitamin C, there's retinols, um, tretinone and adapalene, for instance. There, there are ways in which you can do that, but applying topical topical caffeine to your skin and inhibiting collagen synthesis is not great, especially if you are applying it 
to your under eyes. Now, I have no idea how this research translates into real world um, in vivo in vivo findings. I, I know that the research is in vivo, but I don't know how it really generalizes across the population at large. Since those studies do exist and there are conflicting data uh, in, in regard to its inhibit inhibitory potential on collagen, it definitely raises a caution or, or a red flag for me at least in my opinion that's why i stopped using it on my skin especially my under eyes because your under eyes are that skin down there is or down there up here is thinner than the rest of your body so if you're putting something on there that's going to be inhibiting collagen synthesis or potentially that has been shown in research studies to inhibit collagen it's definitely a cause of concern again for me i that's a red flag for me i'm just not going to use it on my skin and yeah that's that's all there is to it i'm not going to use caffeine anymore especially on um, under my eyes. Now the EGCG on the other hand that is in this product has the opposite effect. It may improve collagen synthesis or at least protect the skin from sun, from the sun, from UV. UV contributes 80% all the way up to 90% of the visible signs of skin aging. So having an antioxidant in your, in a serum or a moisturizer or maybe even potentially a sunscreen whether or not it's gonna have a huge effect on your skin in the real world setting is gonna be hard to really establish firmly. But there is definitely more research studies to suggest that EGCG is more beneficial to your skin from an anti-aging perspective, as well as just an overall protective perspective versus the data that we have on caffeine. Especially, we don't really have a ton of data on caffeine in regard to reducing eye puffiness or discoloration. I mean, there may be one or two, there may be a handful out there that I'm aware of, and I'll leave some references again down below in the description box, but it's not as compelling or as strong as we have for EGCG or for other products that can help to lighten a uh, hyperpigmentation underneath the eyes like hydroquinone or something like arbutin which is a natural alternative that can also help to lighten hyperpigmentation and also a good sunscreen is going to help to just drive down pigmentation issues generally speaking on the skin okay let's just go ahead and get into my experience of using this so i when i first got this i used this every single day i did as directed i used it in the morning and at night I found that it was hi it highly dried out my skin to the point where it was looking really bad, um, crazy. Like I was freaking out at how this dried out my skin. And I was putting a moisturizer sunscreen over it too. So it wasn't like I was putting a serum on my skin and letting it evaporate. I was putting an occlusive agent over my skin. So I was really surprised about that. Also, I wasn't noticing any, any change at, at all. I was using this very consistently for quite a while. I mean, a month and I wasn't noticing any change at all in my allergic shiners, the pale under eye like shininess. And again, I don't think that's going to be treated with a caffeine topical solution. I think that's going to be treated more so with better control of my allergies, which I'm not great at doing. I definitely need to get that under control and try and find a way to drive down that. But I think that a topical application of something is not going to help any sort of under eye appearance, definitely in the long run permanently, especially if you are dealing with something like allergies or even if you have a medical condition that you may not be aware of or that you may be aware of, that could also manifest as pigmentation issues underneath the eyes that you would need to talk to a clinician, your your doctor, your primary care physician about how to manage that in order to provide a um, an effect in reducing that pigmentation underneath the eyes. But that being said, I was not happy at all with this for my under eyes. And I've noticed that is a consistent line of thinking for a lot of people out there. A lot of people don't really notice too much of a difference. And again, I was kind of freaked out by the research that I saw in regard to it, potentially the caffeine inhibiting collagen synthesis. Now, this is the topical application of caffeine. I don't really see a lot of data to suggest that the intake of things like coffee and tea can do that to collagen. In fact, I think it may have the opposite effect in terms of the other antioxidants and the things that are in there that can potentially inhibit matrix metalloproteinases, which are enzymes in the skin that can reduce the breakdown of collagen and preserve collagen and elastin in the skin. But it really was the, the inhibition of topical caffeine, the topical caffeine's inhibition of collagen that really freaked me out. 
and that's another reason why I stopped using it because I was not showing, it wasn't showing any benefit to me. Now that being said, I am still using this on a regular basis, but I'm not using it on my skin. Um, I'm not using it on my face. I'm not using it anywhere else on my body. Where I have been using it though, and this is sort of a, an ex a, a pretty much a science experiment just for myself to see if I notice any difference or benefit, but I was digging into the research a little further and I was seeing studies showing that caffeine, topical application of caffeine to your scalp can facilitate new growth and hair growth and inhibit certain enzymes and, and conversions that lead to hair loss. Now that's something that I think everyone to a certain extent, especially guys, I mean, as you move on through life, you have to kind of think about and some people don't even care some people you know really want to find ways to manage it i think the the fda approved ways are minoxidil which is the topical active ingredient found in rogaine and then there's also finasteride which is an oral oral medication but i was digging more into the research and i was seeing studies even randomized controlled in vivo studies showing that caffeine a caffeine solution applied to the scalp showed non-inferiority to minoxidil five percent so basically non-inferiority means that it isn't inferior or superior to that product. So caffeine was pretty much equal in terms of statistical significance in regard to its ability to improve hair growth and maintain the hair that's already on the head. So that was really compelling for me to see that data. And also caffeine, in the in vivo studies that I found show that caffeine is easily penetrable by the hair shaft and hair follicle, which means it's gonna actually get in there and do its work. And the work, I think the mechanism behind that part Partly is just like I said, reducing a an en enzymatic conversion. Uh, and in regard to hair loss, especially the type of hair loss that most people experience, it is an enzymatic conversion with 5-alpha reductase being that enzyme that converts active uh, testosterone in the body, which is higher in males. That's why male pattern uh, baldness is higher in males, and that's why it's given that name. But the 5-alpha reductase converts testosterone in the body into free roaming dihy dihydrotestosterone. And that really drives hair loss and the progression of hair loss. And minoxidil helps to inhibit that enzyme, that 5-alpha reductase. And I think also finasteride does that as well. Caffeine may also do that too. It may have that same mechanism of action as minoxidil and finasteride, but it is a, a natural, I guess, alternative, at least to the studies that I found, to something like minoxidil, which is a topical application, topical medication that is FDA approved. Caffeine doesn't have the FDA approval for that indication, but there are also other natural things like spearmint, for instance, that can also, to a certain degree, inhibit 5-alpha reductase and possibly help to improve hair growth for some people and reduce hair loss. So I think that's really, really important and promising, promising finding, especially in regard to finding new alternatives to medications, natural alternatives that we can harness in medicine. But like I said, I'm glad I go. So like I said, I must knock this over, but I'm glad I actually had two bottles because now I can just sort of use them up and just see if I notice any experience. I don't necessarily like need to be applying caffeine to my, my scalp, but you know, any little bit helps. I think having a preventative mindset to anti-aging or to aging in, in general is important, especially if it is important to you. If anti-aging, if aging and trying to prevent or slow down that progression is important to you, I think it's good to have a preventative mindset and to use things before they start and to do things before they start, you know, exercising, meditating, sleeping, eating well, doing these things, applying sunscreen, <laughs> for instance, um, applying topical caffeine, doing these things as a preventative approach is more important and definitely more powerful than a cure. I know you've heard that saying, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. And it is totally, it's definitely true. I mean, it's also going to possibly save you money in the long run. Uh, preventative measures help to lower healthcare expenditures in the long run, future healthcare expenditures, not only for the individual, for the patient, but also for the healthcare system at large. So I think having a preventative approach to things, even if they are cosmetic, 
<laughs> cosmetic health skin things um, is definitely important for not only just your overall aesthetic, but also for potentially reducing healthcare costs in the future, as well as possibly even for your mental and emotional health. I mean, if you have, if definitely looks, appearances, the visual aspect of of our bodies are linked to a certain extent to our mental and emotional health. So having things that you're, you can do to be preventative is incredibly important. That being said, I don't think that using this as, your, as an under eye treatment or using this as a skin treatment, a topical skin application is going to do you a whole lot of good. I, but I would highly recommend looking into a serum that is just EGCG, an EGCG extract. I think that's gonna provide more benefit to your skin. There's also some research showing that um, extracts, tea extracts, especially white tea extract, but also green tea extract, uh, can help to inhibit the enzymes that break down collagen and elastin. Like I said, the matrix metalloproteinases or the MMPs. So having a serum that has the EGCG, which is an extract from green tea, may possibly be helpful for uh, protecting your collagen and elastin. But again, it's really gonna be your sunscreen that's going to, and your, your sun protective measures that are going to have the, the, the best impact in terms of anti-aging and maintaining the integrity of your collagen, elastin, main integrity of your, of your entire skin. So I think just having that in place is going to be probably the, the best option for you. So yeah, I don't recommend this for the skin. I do recommend it for the scalp, at least for me. Uh, I can't tell you to use this on your scalp and it's going to help sprout new hairs on your head. I just can't tell you that. Uh, but I'm definitely going to be using this for myself as a, I don't know, a science experiment just to see, you know, if I have thicker, fuller hair to, a, I don't know, maybe, maybe I will. But again, I don't necessarily need to use this, but I'm definitely interested to see if it does anything. But anyway, I hope you like this video. If you did like this video and you found it helpful, please hit the like button down below, share it with your friends and your family and whomever else, strangers on the street that you may encounter baristas at your favorite coffee joint, share it with them. I'd love to re have a larger audience so I can reach more people and spread the good word about skincare research. There's a lot of stuff out there that's swimming on the internet that isn't entirely true and I've fallen for some of the dubious claims out there, but I definitely want to make sure that I am giving out and that we're all conversing um, from a scientific perspective, from a scientific basis. So definitely hit that like button. It really helps me to reach more people and I really appreciate it. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.